Great. So as you know that the network generally used to organize such kind of program in every month. So this is one kind of promotion program or the special session. So today we are organizing a special session on the Rackster. So as you know, this is very important reference tools for the literature review. Familiar with this uh, literature review Rackster uh, soon, but before going today's uh, today's uh, session, the host of the name of the uh, session is Dr. Sujit Kuju, National Librarian, but due to technical uh, our today's speaker, Dr. Shouris Dasgupta. So before going to present our session, I am introduce Dr. Shouris Dasgupta. You are mostly welcome on behalf of the Vishwa Bharati Library Network. Okay. As you know, that Shouris Dasgupta has been working on on AI problems in the interaction zone of NLP, recon recommendation system and knowledge graphs for the last 15 years. Dating back to his PhD days at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, USA, when he's not working at the AI problems, he art and science of business development at his startup Rex Labs. He always sneaks some time out, which he dedicates to his culinary pursuit, history study, and of course, Tintin. So this is at the Dhiruvai Ambani Institute of Information and Communication Technology, which happens to be a constant target of all the experiment that he conducts at Rex Lab. Making research fun has become his life mission. So, To be here with Dr. Shouris Dasgupta, you are mostly welcome. So now Das, in your hand. Please, Dr. Shouris Dasgupta. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the introduction, Dr. Uh, Kaushik. And uh, I am so uh, very much uh, thankful to all of you uh, to, to come uh, just a second, just a second, morning just to gather just a up. Just um, I am just okay. one minute. Just one. Oh, Nimaita, Nimaita, our university librarian, Dr. Nimai Chansada, has already come. So just uh, I have. Okay, great. No, no, uh, let him continue. Let him continue. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Dr. Shouris Dasgupta, please. Okay, you may proceed. Yeah, sure. So, Sorry for Sorry. Uh, yeah, so uh, good morning. Uh, uh, yeah, good, good morning, Dr. Nimai. So, uh, so, uh, so, so what happened was that uh, when I was doing my own PhD uh, as a PhD student, and I was pretty much up, uh, in, in, I don't know, PhD students have, are attending today, uh, but I am, I was pretty much in sort of a same situation in where uh, many of the research scholars. And uh, I began my journey uh, as mentioned at University of Missouri, Kansas City, uh, in the United States, and uh, I was doing my PhD in uh, in specific AI uh, in computer science. And at the time, I was totally bewildered. You know, I didn't know much about what research is, and I straight away went. There was was and papers, good papers have already been published. So, we had before. Later on, I kind of like figured because I, I was in a good lab uh, with a very good 
supervisor. So I kind of figured out uh, the tricks of how to select a uh, uh, people, which people read, which people and I was uh, early uh, making friendships and uh, interacting with uh, students from all over us you know not just in my own university from all across different disciplines you know including top places like harvard and stanford and mit what i felt was uh, the biggest problem that everybody was having is uh, what we call as uh, memory retention because memory is something that, that that's uh, uh, that's innate barrier within human beings right in the sense that what was happening was we were consuming so much, we were reading so much, and uh, we were trying to absorb and assimilate so much that we were also forgetting the details, the nitty gritties of what we read two months ago, or what we read five months ago, or what we read one year ago. And if you look at research, it's a life, it's, it's kind of quite a, a research project doesn't just you know, end up in, in one semester or so. It, it continues for quite some good amount of time right so in that sense uh i i just wondered that you know can there be something you know some sort of a software or something that helps me in remembering all those nitty gritties because research is also about constant comparing and contrasting that you have to always constant compare and contrast what you're reading with what you've already read and then find the research gaps identify the research gaps and do something about it right so that's when you know when i came back to india after my phd uh, and i uh, joined as an assistant professor at dia city and i was i started uh, guiding some research okay. students myself okay. including phd yeah. students as well as uh, masters and i found the same issue so i started talking a lot with them and with many many other from other universities, other kind of departments. And then I finally realized, you know, like, I really need to do something about it. You know, and so what I did was I gathered a bunch of undergrad students. And what I did was that I uh, started make, building something like that. I did not, you know, it's, it's, it's very, I became uh, an entrepreneur or, 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 or you know, the startup journey uh, started up as an accident, complete accident, you know, because I'm, prim I'm still primarily a professor. So what happened was that I just couldn't find anything that would help me in doing those things. So I just started building something with, with a bunch of my students. That's how, you know, Rax started. That's how Rax evolved. And that is still how Rax, uh, how Rax is evolving in, in that direction. So uh, one thing I want to tell you up front that uh, uh, the, the discussion, the format of the discussion that I'm going to have today uh, is less of a promotion. So I will ne never going to tell you that Rax is great or anything and you should try out Rax or something like that. You can always look out Rax and see if that is helpful to, for you. If you find that to be helpful, that's really fantastic. If not, just let us know uh, where we can improve. So I would want to uh, position myself this way that we are, this is, I'm not trying to promote Rax right now. So this is more of a, my own experience about how one should do research and how, especially how one should do literature okay, and literature analysis and where Rax will come into the context and I can show you how one may want to do something using Rax, right? So let's look at it that way. So, uh, so let me. I don't think my my screen is shared, right? So I have to, I think I have to share my screen. Uh, just let me know if uh, my screen is visible. Hello, uh, is my screen visible? Just let me know. Yes, that. yes, absolutely. It's visible. Okay. It's visible. Okay, great, great, great. So, uh, 
so so uh, uh, we will get to racks but just to give you a, a brief overview uh, it's primarily a literature survey and analysis tool in that way it's a very very new category of uh, uh, of, of software and I'll show you why it's new category and how to what extent it kind of like complements with uh, you know softwares like reference managers and where it actually departs and uh, how one can use both to do their research right so the challenges faced by researchers is essentially i don't know how much uh, and what kind of uh, audience i'm uh, addressing today uh, which means which which kind of disciplines uh, all of you are from but in our discipline and in many other disciplines uh, the problem the real constant pressure that we are having is publish or perish that's uh, that's you know we, we we are living in this kind of a pressure cooker situation so to say and uh you know the, the the thing is the other problem is that you know we have to publish at a speed without compromising on the quality that's the other problem like you you know you, it's not just about publishing anything but publishing with quality and if you want to do that, then you need high quality research team. You have to gather up a high quality research team. If you are not able to do that, you can't get to uh, a good publication. And finally, at the, you know, on, on top of it, if you are a professor, you would be relating with connecting with and you also need uh, in, in, in a lot of research work, in a lot of research topic, you also need the funding. That kind of fun thing to be in uh, and, and and funding can be at times become very very competitive you know uh, to get the funding uh, even for the research so there are multiple challenges that uh, researchers face but if you look at it from uh, there's another kind of challenge that we are always facing uh, when we have to produce good result uh, is that good results cannot come from thin air, right? We, we are constantly reading uh, other people's work, criticizing other people's work, and while criticizing other people's work, new ideas come up, right? So that's how it is. So if you look at it, you'll see that the entire, whatever is our career goal, you know, let's say that if I'm a PhD student, my career goal would be to join academia or maybe to join corporate research, uh, or, or whatever, if I'm a professor, my, I have other kind of career goals. So whatever would be the goal, we are, if you look at it carefully, it's like we are in a constant battle against volume, time, and memory. And what do you mean by that? If you just look at science itself, uh, and I'm not including engineering over here, there are more than 1.8 million articles, research papers, that, that's published every year. So that's, you know, you can imagine the, the volume and the velocity uh, in, in which uh, papers are getting published in, in just in science. And interestingly, what we found out through, uh, through the various statistics that has been reported in, in, you know, places like UNESCO and through our own uh, internal surveys is that 90% of the papers are never cited. That's alarming, right? And, and the, one of the primary reasons why the papers get cited uh, which are getting published is because we don't have time we are running out of time we can't simply in, it's impossible for the human brain to to read uh, to find everybody and then to read everybody in details it's not possible really so i give you an interesting example from uh, humanities let's say uh, cultural and anthropology and what i did was i felt that okay let me pick up something that's not really a very topic i mean a, a topic that probably very very few research papers have been published and a topic that probably very few people might be pursuing so what i did was i went to google scholar and i typed in evar cemetery now evar is a, a you know central uh, European, they used to be a central uh, mid uh, middle age Central European Turkic tribe, uh, and you can see the picture. I don't know whether you are able to see the picture. That's a Yavar warrior, and they used to have these uh, stone tombs, you know, as you can see on the picture. So that's what an Avar cemetery looks like. Now, 
when I did it on Google Scholar, I found that just between 2019 and now, and well, uh, now it might have increased because uh, th this was like in 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 in, in March. I did uh, I did this thing, and I found more than 300 articles just published in between 2019 and at that time point. And in total, there were more than 4.5 thousand articles just on this very niche topic. So imagine if even a niche topic, if you look at it, has so many publications, such a niche topic. So now something very interesting that I want to you know, bring your attention to and, and where at every single layer, you, you see that your opportunity is dropping when it comes to literature survey and literature review. We have figured out that a minimum of 72% of your of the, all, all the newly published papers remain uncollected every year in the sense that 72% of the papers that are coming out in your uh, in your domain in your field every year doesn't even make into your folder that's the uh, survey average that we have and that out of that 64% Whatever gets into your folder, 64% researchers have responded that they don't get to touch 70% of whatever is there in their folder. So which means that 70% of the papers in their folder are just piling up, you know, and maybe every month, month over month over month. And imagine that they are not even able to get, getting the time to even read what they actually have in the, in the folder. Forget about those papers which they don't have in the folder. So out of that, 70% of uh, the researchers responded that they are not able to finish more than one paper a week in their to do list. So now you can imagine then how many more papers would get keep getting piled up, you know. And, and then finally, the biggest problem is that we forget. It. So sixty percent researchers have reported that they frequently forget, and we all forget, but frequently forget in the sense that uh, what they have read before. So that's the that's the situation, right? And what we are trying to do in RACS is we are trying to figure out that can through engineering, through design, and to some extent through AI, we can solve these three issues. One, connecting research information. Can we help researchers in connecting the research information that they don't have to remember much. They don't have to remember anything at all. And that's the biggest challenge. That's a very, very bold statement that we, are, we want to make over there. That you know, the nitty gritties you don't have to remember anymore. Rax is going to remember that for you and bring it up front, in front of you. So the problem, the problem that we face, you know, uh, as human beings is that we have to, and as researchers specifically, is that we have to compare constantly compare and contrast the facts and the figures and the arguments and you know the approach the research problems the research uh, the formulation assumptions everything all the different aspects of a paper and we have to keep comparing and contrasting uh, what we are currently reading with what we have already read before uh, so that we can quickly figure out what uh, uh, identify the research gaps and if we are not able to quickly identify the research gaps then we cannot start thinking, you know, having our own ideas, our own contributions, our own insights, and then contribute further, right? So that's the first and foremost thing that we are trying to focus on. Apart from that, the second unique thing about RACS is that we figured out that, you know, of course there are, you know, we, we set alerts in terms of uh, Google Scholar alert and other kind of alerts in where, 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 where uh, we get to know what are the papers that are coming up, what are the new papers that are coming up, right? So kind of paper suggestions, research paper suggestions. But the problem with that and what we figured out is that they are not really connected with what you are currently doing, where you are currently stuck what you're currently thinking about, what you're currently dabbling with, right? Which means at the most, they would be related with a certain kind of keywords that you have already said, or they, and you don't update the keywords on the basis of what, which aspect you are more interested in right now, you know? Or uh, they are more related with, let's say, your reading list, 
but your reading list can have tons of paper, you know, hundreds of paper. And it's not that every paper is important to you right now. So what we try to do, we try to figure out that can we actually help you in uh, connecting you with the research updates that's going on out there with respect to your current point of attention, right? That's the second unique thing about RACS. The third thing about RACS is that can we, you know, when you do literature review, it's interesting that when you do literature review, you would be also doing note taking. And as you are doing note taking, new ideas will come up in your mind. And as new ideas come up in your mind, you would also want to write it down, you know, and, and you know, like some sort of a thought journaling, you know, it's like a working note. You ha it will constantly come up with your working notes as you are doing literature survey. And while you are doing all of this, suddenly you might want to explore more. You know, while you are zooming into certain aspects of a particular paper, you want to explore more papers related to that aspect only, specifically to that aspect. And this happens a lot. So what we felt was all of this should be very well interconnected coherently into a nice workflow. And we should just put it in one platform, right? So that was the third objective of, of, of RACS. So as you can clearly see, uh, although it deals with lit literatures and papers and so on and so forth, but it is not at all a reference manager because if we were a reference manager, our focus would have been very different. Our focus would have been to help you in citation and stylizations and back citations and also to organize papers according to certain styles, right? So that would have been the... Uh, that would have been the focus. While that is important, but that is a different category of need, right? A different category of software. While these three are the primary categories uh, with uh, which RACS deals with, right? And this is why, if you look at it carefully, you'll see that why RACS is a completely new genre, a completely new category by itself. You know, we, we deal with the nitty gritties of uh, literature analysis and dissecting a paper and and so on and so forth as you will see just to tell you for those people who are new to research and if you think that you are the only person to deal with all these issues you are wrong I just looked up a year ago on Quora which is a very popular question answering platform and I saw that there are more than 4.8 million uh, people just following questions related to literature survey and literature analysis. 4.8 million people, I imagine. So it's a pandemic, so to say. I mean, and it's, it's not, you are not an outlier. So first of all, you need to stay calm. You know, don't panic that, you know, you are finding it overwhelming. You know, and that's the, you are, you are part of the majority, huge majority. So to sum it up, we have our own stress level and it's not going down and you know inversely you know the productivity can go up a lot right we have hell lot to read time is ticking that's the problem that's the that's what right so how to do a comprehensive yet quick literature analysis an alternative perspective now i'm going to give you a very very alternative perspective some maybe very different to what you already do but you can share your opinion um uh you know uh, i don't know you can put it on chat and i would love to see that you know what, what's your opinion about what's your take about this this particular way of doing literature analysis uh, uh you know and uh, by the way uh am i to take the questions in between as well or um should i be waiting till the end Um, okay, maybe I just take the questions till at the end. So, when the literature survey or literature review, I actually like the word and analyze because you know at the end of the day you have to analyze. You have to critically examine papers when you're examining a paper when you are anal reviewing a paper. So there are there can be multiple reasons why you want we might you might want to read a paper or analyze a paper. Uh, one reason can be that you just want to be updated with what 
your your community your own research community is thinking about a problem or you might also want to read papers just because you want to learn some new concepts and techniques or you might want to know how how other people uh, you know your your peers uh, how, how they are trying to attack a problem which you are trying to attack and how they dif- differ or how they are similar with you and and so on and so forth and where you can in, in make it even better and so on so that can be the third reason the fourth reason can be that you just want to have a very uh, rigorous citation you know for your people that you're submitting or the thesis that you're writing or for the grant proposal that you're submitting for, for funding or it can be all of the above right but I want to tell you something that this is where I keep telling my own students that, of course, these uh, all these uh, all these reasons are important reasons, but they are they should be like byproducts. The primary reason why you should read a good paper, and uh, you know, of course, I'm emphasizing the word good, is because it's an amazing research opportunity for you. Every good paper is an amazing research opportunity, so you need to be absolutely focused. And every single other reason, they are important, but they are just byproducts. So the, the, the entire reason why you, would, you should be reading papers is because you get ideas of them, right? So don't do this. Say no to enough paper reading. Now let's do some research. It doesn't happen in a sequential way. So, you know, you have to keep reading papers with different intentions, with different focus in different stages of your research. So every stage of your research, whether whether you are in the early stage of the research or mid stage of the research or end stage of the research, every stage of the research will demand its own type of literature review, its own type of uh, literature analysis, right? So it's, it doesn't happen this way that, you know, you just read some papers and then you stop reading papers and, you, you know, do research. I, I don't recommend that. It's not a very optimal strategy. So, yeah, now getting prepared to handle the paper. So usually the bottom of a STEM paper, and pretty much I have seen that um, in, in many other social sciences uh, and, in, in, and even in humanities, in some disciplines of humanities, it's pretty much you, they have an analogous uh, format of how a body of a paper would look like. So you have the introduction, uh, where the focus is why the authors felt that the problem should be solved. That would be the focus. The method is, so when you're reading an introduction, what you should be asking yourself is, did you get the uh, this answer, the answer of this question? You know, let's say that you're reading my paper. and uh, You should ask yourself this question. Why Suresh felt that the problem should be solved? And did, are you convinced about my answer? Did you get that from my paper? Get that answer from my paper so that is the key thing that you should be looking into the introduction when you are reading the introduction when you're reading the method let's say i read uh, you know my approach then you should be asking yourself did sorry solve the problem you know how and how did sorry solve the problem and the result of course uh, the question that you should be asking is what are the findings and explanations you know uh, what explanations did i give and in the discussions um, section you know the synopsis of the strengths and the scope of improvement did i did i discuss those things or not Right. Uh, but even before that, uh, you know, uh, I, I would like you to uh, tell, you know, how to even select a good paper. Right. So uh, so I give you a five minute recipe of, of how to select a good paper. The very first thing that you do, which is step number zero, uh, is uh, we call I call it the elimination round which is you put a threshold in terms of the journal or if you are also looking for a conference. So, so the journal impact factor or the conference SJR H index ranking, or if it is computer science and there's something called co-ranking and you need to put a threshold and you can actually consult your advisor or your supervisor to figure out what should be the threshold uh, beyond be below which you are not going to go when it, when it comes to reading good papers. Right when it comes to selecting good papers, and one thing that I can show you is, uh, so SJR is a very good uh, is a very good uh, site. It's a, is by Schemago. 
what you can do over there is uh, you can choose your particular discipline, let's say uh, arts and humanities. And within that, you choose a sub-discipline, let's say history. And within that, you can choose the year since when you would want to see which are the prestigious journals, right? And then over there, you can choose journals if you want to choose journals or book CDs or maybe conference proceedings, let's choose journals. And then over here, you can find uh, the H index of the journals as well as the SJR. Now, why I like SJR, just to cut a long short, is that it actually uses a, a very similar metric to, uh, to what Google's page rank algorithm, how it look, you know, in the sense that how many uh, uh, prestigious journals are citing this journal and how many prestigious journals are cited by this journal. And that actually, and how many, and it also uh, doesn't give much score to, uh, to sell citations. So what happens is that it's a lot better metric for me personally as compared to impact factor. Because impact factor, you know, the rich gets richer, the old gets richer, so those sort of things can happen. Right? And it also has a very interesting way of figuring out in the recent times what is what what, what journals are coming up in that area, right? And uh, so this is a this is a really nice way in which let, let me just uh, share this uh, with you on chat. I think, I hope I'm audible, yeah. So this is a really nice way of uh, selecting, you know, uh, uh, or eliminating rather. Like with journals, you are going to uh, go further down. Then after that, you just look into the, you look into the title uh, and uh, figure out whether that relates to your work or not. And then you look into the abstract definitely and see if it says something new whether the abstract says something new and uh, then you go to the conclusion and claim uh, and maybe some results and findings and see if you find something intriguing or new about them or not right now a lot of times what happens if you're reading a lot of paper you might forget you might start forgetting well how this new paper that you're reading compares at an abstract level to a paper that you already read before and to what extent it is new, right? So also, uh, so, so I will show you an alternative way in which you can actually do uh, step number two and also step number three and uh, using racks. So let me go to racks and so the website is rackster.io, right? And for those people who are yet to, uh, uh, yeah, so this is the website, who are yet to find where what Racks is. And uh, you can uh, actually sign up in a very, very, uh, uh, a very uh, easy way just by putting your email, email address and you can just keep, uh, you know, uh, progressing uh, sign up signing up accordingly and then uh, uh, what happens when you log in when you sign up what happens is that you get inside your your environment which is your research project environment right and this would be like as you can see all the research that you're currently working on or you know some may be related to each other some may not be related to each other uh, some you may be working in solo mode some you may be working in collaboration and when that happens uh, also so there may be a lot of projects which you are done way back and uh, is we can just keep keep them as well right so i'm going to show you with an example of how you can do uh, you know this thing uh, you know, step number two and step number three using using racks, right? 
So let me just walk into one of my ongoing research projects. Uh, that's research paper summarizer. And so as you walk any uh, project of a, of a research, of a, of a RACS, a project looks something like this, where because you know Rax is primarily a literature analysis uh, and dissection tool, so it starts with your papers, the papers that you would be reading or you have already reading, which is your reading list, and you can upload your reading list from your computer or from PDF URLs, or if you are using a reference manager, you can also upload the reference file. Or if you are more used to putting your papers on Google Drive, you can do that as well, right? So, uh, so as you can see, I have so many uh, papers that uh, that I have either I am about to read or I've already read and so on, or I'm currently reading. Now, one interesting thing is, is the moment you are uh, the moment you upload a paper inside Racks, what Racks does is that uh, it actually generates something called key insights as you can see and what it does is that it breaks down this uh a paper into the corresponding uh aspects of the paper let's let's see what happens so let me just uh, uh look into one paper. let me maybe maybe this paper uh maybe the first maybe this paper And what it does is that it generates, so it, it, within a few seconds, as, as you can see, it read the entire paper on your behalf. Entire paper, not just the abstract or not just the conclusion or not just the introduction, but it read the entire paper on your behalf. And then what it's doing is it is breaking the paper into all these different aspects. Like what is the research goal or the research question? Uh, what is the research context behind that question? Uh, what kind of originality, you know, the authors might have claimed, what is the methodology, and then within research out, outcome, you know, the evaluation setup, evaluation method, research data, and an analysis. And, you know, it does, it detects this kind of aspects or dimensions of the paper on the fly, which means for a very different paper, this may be a little different, right? And it, these are not the sections of the paper which the author has given. This is what RAX is generating, okay? And then it might very well happen, depending upon which stage of research you are in, you may, want, you may not be interested in, uh, uh, you know, to decide whether you want to read this paper or not. You may just want to quickly go into the evaluation method. Now, this is something you won't find in the abstract because this is something that has come from inside the paper, right? And then you can just quickly go through the evaluation method and then you can figure out whether this is a paper you want to invest your time in, right? Or for some other person who is at the very beginning stage of their research, you may just want to look into the research goal and then decide whether the uh, whether whether you want to read the paper or not. Of course, you know, research goal is something that you can also figure out from the abstract, right? But if you are more interested in, let's say, possible originality or the key method used or something like that, then this is something where uh, where definitely uh, this will help you. So this is one very quick way in which you can figure out what's, you know, how you can actually quickly get to the, uh, get to do this. Make sure that this doesn't happen because, you know, just like how, what the card tells you that you know it should not happen that you know you're just reading the abstracts of all the papers that oh you, and then come to your professor and then you say that well you know i have read all the papers and i'm going to add them in my don't worry i'm going to add them in my re reference list so five minutes is definitely not going to be enough but at the same time this should also not happen where you spend the entire day reading reading a dense paper and then you know at the end of the day when somebody asks you, like, what is what was it about? And of course, it's an exaggeration. And you're, you're, not, you're like, well, am I, was I supposed to pay attention? So uh, that's also true. So the very first part is that is comprehensive, comprehension of a paper, right? Which means that 
in order to un- critically examine my paper, you have to first understand what I have to say, right? So that's the very first thing. And if you take a lot of time in understanding what I have to say, then that again is a problem, right? So a lot of times what happens when we try understanding papers is that we are stuck at specific uh, concepts or specific uh, aspects of the paper. And we don't know, you know, because we are not aware of those constructs or those concepts, or we are we have kind of forgotten about them, um, or maybe we want to know whether there has been new updates about those concepts or those constructs, right? So to make understanding very quick and very easy, uh, what we did was, and because you know why understanding is important, because that's the basis of your critical examination. Right, you will need to understand the problem formulation, the pros, the experimental design, and then you need to be convinced about them after you have understood. And that, when you start convincing yourself, that's where you critically examine, and that's where you know new ideas will 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 come up. Right. So I'll show you how you can actually do this understanding part in a very quick way uh, in in rants. So. So, so let's say that I uh, I open up this paper. Now, this is my reading room inside Racks. The moment I open a paper inside Racks, what happens is that uh, just uh, bear with me with my with my slow internet. Today, my internet is extremely slow, and I'm just connected to my mobile internet right now. So, uh, so what happens is the moment I open a a paper, uh, racks automatically suggests over here on the right hand panel other papers that are related to the core theme of right. So that's uh, that's one very interesting thing. And uh, many times, if it has more information, it will also give you the you know the impact factor, the site score, the SNIP, SNIP, the SJR, which I was talking about, and the H index, you know. Of, of, of where it came from, right? So this is one thing. It, it quickly gives you uh, an overall uh, suggestion, you know, with respect to this particular paper, right? But now something interesting can happen. Imagine that you are reading this paper and you are reading the abstract of the paper. And one, let's say that you want to know whether this abstract is really new or not. So what you can do is, select the entire abstract right and the moment you select the abstract this context menu is going to pop up and over there what happens is then see did i even read other papers in my collection which have very related idea which are very related to or which are very related problem how new is this abstract as compared to all the other abstracts or, or not just abstracts but all the other people that i have already read in my collection or that are in my to do list in my collection so what i do i compare i click on compare from uh, from your collection and as i click on compare from your collection what rack starts doing is just trying to figure out you know go deep and figure out whether there are other papers that are in my collection that is related to this particular section and it found out that well there isn't anything which means that yes this is something which is new but probably uh, as you can see over here there were other sections of this paper where this did not happen like that like as an example uh, this particular section uh, had all this four twelve you know four four connections that I've already made. So in the sense that when I selected this section and did the same thing I showed you, 27, four, that many number of suggestions came and I connected four, uh, four of them saying that, okay, this is actually related, this paper and not this paper, but this section of this paper is related with this section. And that's why I made some connection. I connected them and I also put some notes I can also see that there are other suggestions also, like this paper came up, which came from this, uh, which came from this uh, project, and I can also connect that to that section, and I can also say that okay, this is how they are similar, 
uh, and this is how they are dissimilar. And if I can put some more notes, I can say that this is my to do and so on. And I can press enter and I am now linking up. It's almost like I'm linking up once different sections of the of paper that I'm currently reading with all the other papers that I've already read before. The, as you can see, December 14th, this was the paper that I read uh, a few days ago or the papers that I've read very long ago, September 20th, 2020. This also came up, as you can see. And it's not just papers that are, that will be coming from this particular project. If there are papers which are closely related to this section, but are in a completely other project, which I might have totally forgotten. And that happens a lot, that there is a paper in a very different project that I'm doing with somebody else. And I've kept that paper and I've forgotten about it also, that how that paper relates with this paper in this project. And these two projects, imagine that they are quite different. So that is also going to come up. As you can see that this is a different project. And this paper was last accessed on Jan 20th, 2020. And it now came up, right? Which is very, very related to what this section is about. So this is where the AI is working. And this is where it's a very, very unique feature, so to say. I have not seen such feature anywhere else. And uh, it, you know, just to reemphasize that this is one of the ways in which you can clearly see that it's not a reference manager. It's not meant to be a reference manager, right? So, and, and again, you can keep uh, keep connecting them like that. And it, also those papers are going to come in, which are which are uh, paired with you by your collaborator. So it's not just your papers, as you can see, this was uh, shared by my, by my student, my PhD student, and that paper came in, came out, right? So this is again, another example of how another paper came out. Right. So this is a, a very interesting. Which you can stitch the papers together and the interesting, the most imp important part is that you don't have to remember anything. You see the entire load of remembering the nitty gritties. Like I might remember this paper, what overall in general this paper is about, but I may not remember the details and most likely I will not because I'm reading so many, so many papers. So this is a very, very good way in which you can uh, make sure that, you know, to what extent a paper is new, how one paper is different than the other paper, how one paper is similar to the other paper, and so on and so forth. Now comes the understanding of the paper. Let's say that you're reading this paper and you are in the introduction section and you don't really know what natural language generation is, right? So I just uh, select this particular concept, natural language generation. Again, this pops up. And then what I would do, instead of going to uh, read a research article on that, because that will take time, definitely. It is, it is difficult to, you know, why, to, to understand something if I have to read another research paper and then come to this paper and then again continue re reading this paper. It's, it, that, that, that can lead me into a rabbit hole. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on other resources. And when I click on other resources, what happens is I have these three types of other resources. Wikipedia, online lectures, which are tier one conferences, workshops, seminar recordings, or even, uh, 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 you know, tier one uh, um, courses like MOOCs. And uh, including uh, stuff coming from NPTEL, but Coursera and Udacity and so on and so forth. And then light reads. So light reads are top-notch magazine, magazine articles uh, and, and top-notch uh, technical paper uh, articles and top-notch blogs coming out of top-notch research labs, right? And like as an example, science, scientific American, nature, um, and, and even economist and Harvard Press and Oxford Press and so on and so forth. So these are the kind of MIT tech reviews. So these are the kind of things that are... Uh, uh, that that would be light read. So let's see what happens if I click on light read. So what it does is that it tries to give me a bunch of articles which are related to this topic and will very easily understand the topic and get back to my work, right? So again, forget about my, uh, forgive my uh, my internet connection today. Uh, today. Uh, it's pretty slow. 
so uh, so what it happens is that and then um, after that it would I, and, and the interesting part is that I can uh, once once they come up uh, you know once they let's say that a comprehensive guide to national language generate this came from data flow I can attach this as a reference not time or read it but let's say that I want to get back to this blog so that I don't forget and it doesn't get messed up so I just attach it and what happens the moment I attached it it got attached to this particular uh, concept and then later on when I click on this particular concept sorry uh, there's a little bit of yeah okay I think uh, it's the uh, internet so what happens is that the moment you click on the click on the attachment, so you would you should have been uh, you should be let me do it one more time. Yeah, I think it didn't go. Yeah. So then when you click on the attachment, you can actually see the attachment attached, you know, with this particular concept. So it's kind of like a helps you to always uh, stay you know stay focused with what you are doing and at the same time you know that you know you can anytime this sticky note and anytime it's almost like you know you have all the references attached uh, uh to that particular context so the good thing about this is you never forget why did you even looked up this blog as an example you would not forget that you have always have the context like for every paper and not just every paper for every section of every paper you have such things you know and it's also in terms of organizing all the different types of attachments that you would have so you can also do papers like as an example i can also say that well i i don't uh, understand abstractive summarization i need to get a more overview of abstractive summarization but from research articles from research papers so i click on Reset articles again and again it will take a little bit of time because yeah and abstractive summarization came up which is uh which is uh, uh a paper and there is another abstractive summarization and i can also do some fine tuning i can say that okay I, let me look into the most recent ones so from 2019 to 2020 and let's apply that and then let's look into the papers that came up and then I can again attach them, you know, for my references in the sense that this paper will help me to understand more about the concept. So I can any day click over here and I can get to this, uh, get to this thing. So this is a very nice way in which, you know, while zooming into specific aspects of the paper, you can again explore at the same, on the same place at the same time. If you have other I found other papers on Google Scholar or on your other kind of portal, let's say library portal and so on. What you can do is you can select, oh, of course, another thing is that you can select an entire, not just a set, uh, not just a concept, but you can select that entire section and you can figure out that are there other papers. So let me just show you with a good example. So let's say this is a paragraph and you can click the entire paragraph or two, three paragraphs, whatever that is, and then you can click on research articles in the same way. And now only those papers are going to come up which are related to this particular paragraph. And again, you can do the same thing. Again, you can uh, click on that and keep clicking, you know, uh, multiple clicks and do that. So, so that is that is a good that is a very very good way in which you can keep exploring more related important papers and you also know which paper to read next because now you are in this section this is bothering you so you know what should be the next papers to read so easy and if you think that there are other papers that you got which I was about to talk that uh, 
let's say that this is a paragraph and you got some papers from google or from other library portal or something then there is something we recently uh came up with which we call attach url so you can you know just attach the url and just for the sake of it uh i'm just typing some saying nonsense uh So, and then you can just put some thing, put some tag, put some remark, and and then, you know, that thing is going to come up, right? So, which is essentially, you can also keep attaching these stuffs that are outside racks, that you got outside racks, so you can attach that as well, right? Now, the interesting thing is that whenever you are doing all these things, racks is constantly trying to understand where you are more interested in which aspects of the papers you are more interested in and then based on that what rags does is it starts giving you with suggestions as you can see over here so every four hours it keeps on checking whether your point of attention has shifted or not every four hours that would be like even a small little highlight that you do on a paper where exactly you are highlighting what exactly you're highlighting uh what kind of people you are attaching like pinning like a stick or or you know what kind of people you know you are more interested in you are you know you are comparing and contrasting so those are the kind of things uh that gives a lot of signal back to racks even the discussions you know i don't think if i would have time to talk about the collaboration part of racks like you can actually have collaborators and do literature survey and literature analysis uh collectively like a study circle like a virtual study circle and you can actually share every paper with your team your supervisor your collaborator using this button share button over here and you can share it with uh share with and then once you share then you can actually do collective uh, study of this paper by uh, doing so this is comments by actually starting a thread like a commenting thread something like this right and you know you actually make a thread and a nested thread and so on just like how one would do in on google docs right and uh, so that that's one thing All that happens is that uh, we have to recap so we have to revisit a paper but we don't have that much time to again reread that paper right so again we can go to key insights so this is more from the recap point of view so key insights can help you in quickly recapping without and this is not a summary by the way because a summary is just a compression of that paper but over here the primary goal is collation as opposed to compression so collation would be more like am i able to collate all the important aspects all the important statements in the right buckets so that it's easy for you to go to any specific bucket and then you just read what you know what authors have to say as compared uh, with respect to that particular bucket. let's say research data usage right and if and because when you recap when you revisit a paper what happens is that you are primarily focused on specific the paper that you want to revisit, right? So it's so easy for for me that I just go to that particular section and, and that's all I, I look at. And you know, and again, you know, I can do something very interesting. I can again select, select certain sections of the paper and if I want to explore more and I can click on research articles over here, this research articles by selecting this section and again explore more so i can i can explore from anywhere you know this because this this set of uh, materials are always with me right and i can then attach or if i want to read it uh, in detail I can also add to my literature list so it will get added to my literature list so that's how it will work over here right so uh, that's a uh, that's one one interesting thing and whenever you feel like new ideas are coming up that's where you, we have your working notes as you can see where the working note is and let's say that i click on uh one of my working notes and 
So this is, and I can have multiple such working nodes as you can see, so, so on and so forth. And then while I'm working also, and by the way, you know, you have uh, one thing I want to mention that if you think that this is something which is your own idea and this needs protection, then please license it before, you know, before you share it with others or something like that. So there are, this is a creative common license so that it safeguards your, your intellectual property. So, and then what happens is that uh, uh, you can actually select certain sections while you're writing, again, you want to explore, you know, like while you are putting your ideas and you're outlining your ideas and so on and so forth, you can again select certain sections and you can again click on uh, all this stuff, whichever you want. And that will give you the uh, corresponding resources uh, according to according to whatever you select, right? So this is always there with you. This this particular panel, you know, the resource panel. You can always select certain sections and click on the resource anything on the resource panel, and it will always come up, and you can attach it, right? So that is uh, one interesting thing. Another interesting thing that a lot of people love about Racks is critique. Which means that whenever there is a, so whenever there is a, is a paper load, Racks automatically uh, generates a set of questions which you can modify, your supervisor can modify, or if you are a supervisor, you can modify these questions or add more questions uh, according to the particular problem that your student is working on. And then it can be used like a template. And it's very interesting a way of actually at the early stage of research to even know how to even read a paper properly, how to read this paper, how to dissect. It. Even key insights is going to help you because these sections will actually let you know that what are you know what are the ways in which you should be looking into a paper, into a research paper, these buckets. And critic also kind of corresponds to that where. But apart from the buckets, it will also encourage you to answer certain questions which you have to answer, like critical questions, like any logical fallacy or inconsistency in the arguments and so on and so forth. And this is amazing because you know you can actually share this again, this critic, and you can do a commenting and recommending over the critic also. So it's kind of like a virtual study circle or a virtual journal club that you can create um, you know, using, using critic. Right. So that's uh, so far as uh, comprehension. And I also touched upon. Uh, uh, so so one, one important thing that I want to sh share with you is that, you know, when it comes to com coming up with new ideas, uh, you have to there, there are three aspects. You know, one aspect is that you you read all the papers and. I usually tell people that don't read the entire paper. Just go and read the problem formulation, how the problem has been, how, how the research question has been formulated, right? And then go to the next paper and do the same thing and then compare them, compare them and then come up with your own notes in terms of what you think should have been, you know, how, what are the stuff that should have been covered if this research question had to be addressed in its full form and what other people have covered so far. So you can all clearly understand that you have your own idea of what needs to be done. You see other people uh, address, formulating or describing the problem or research question in a particular way. Then you ask these questions, and you know this has to be in a brainstorming manner. That you know what did you miss? What did the authors miss? Whether the whatever the authors miss, whether that really matters or not. So that actually helps you in developing a, the skill of you know, uh, the, you know, the skill of insights, generating more insights and more opinion when you are actually reading a paper. So just don't read a paper just like the sake of reading a paper and just don't take it like as it is, but a critical thinking has to be very important. And these are the ways in which you can actually do critical thinking. Why I tell people not to read the entire paper and just go section by section by section, like a more of a horizontal, uh, um, like a breadth first approach as compared to a depth first approach because you tend to forget when you read the paper and then you come to the next paper you, it's very difficult for you to remember how the two problem formulations are similar or different how the assumptions 
are similar or different uh, and whether the assumptions make sense or not so when you're when you're focused at one specific aspect of the paper and you just keep on moving through the aspects of the paper it becomes very easy to 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 do critical analysis to do comparative study and research is all about comparative study so that's why i tell that you know when you are doing a comparative study just uh, so this is this is the weird way that you know which you know i i never used to do they do it this way by the way but i figured out that this right now this works fantastic for me because i can remember a lot more as compared to what i used to remember before so and then later on you know some are the opportunities that you found in the problem or in the research formulation itself and then you move into the approach so i don't have specific uh rather that much time today but i have a lot of youtube videos you know that we constantly uh we are posting and we are also having this going on every wednesday where i talk about very very specific aspects of all these things and i go into the details of each one of the, these things so you can uh, subscribe to our channel on youtube and you can watch each, each one of those videos as to you know as to each one of these aspects right so the, the the overall the bottom line is that it's a lot easier that you go one aspect at a time and you go into the details of that aspect and you do the comparisons and contrasting discuss where the gap is and uh, then uh, you know go you know keep keep going that way so that way also you know racks can help you because you know uh, let's say that you have 50 papers in your to do list so you don't have to go to the entire thing you just go to the problem you know let's say the research goal how the research which means how the research uh, question has been formulated so this is the details of how the research question has been formulated right and then uh, you just look into it and if you want to hide the details you can also hide the details a little bit but we don't compromise on the on the on the actual so since and that is why it's very different than summary because in, if it was a summarizer it would have hired, compressed it a lot less into one or two statements because when you are trying to do literature analysis you cannot you cannot compromise on the details because the details is what that matters right and then what happens is that you can actually quickly read this paper then go to the next paper uh uh, or maybe what you can do is something very interesting. I'll show you how uh, you can actually do that comparison. So let's say that uh, this was a place where I compared this paper with some other paper uh, in my collection only. So this this uh, this purple zones are all the other connected papers in my collection, right? So as I connected there. And now let's say that I want to quickly read this paper and I don't really have the time. So what I could do is that there is something called key insights of this paper. So I don't want, I really don't have the time to read this paper again. Uh, and it was a long time back and I don't remember really much about this paper. So what I can do is I can just cl click on key insights. And then what happens is that uh, I can just simply generate the key insights because the key insights are not yet generated and i can generate the key insights and as you can see within a few seconds i get everything of that paper so whatever i want to understand I put there and i just look into that section and then figure out what this paper was all about and then come back to this paper so it's so easy so fast for me to get to the other paper which is connected with this paper because this is the current point of attention for me right so i don't want to leave this paper right now because i have to finish this paper so i just go to the all the connected papers and i can just look into their view mode click on view mode and then key insights will drop up and i can look into the key insights right so that's a very very interesting way in which i can very easily look back or look forward also sometimes because sometimes they will it will also give you papers which are in your to do list and then quickly read that and then get back to the actual real real that I'm reading currently. Right. So that's another uh, another thing that uh, that we we did. Apart from that, any many other things. Uh, but uh, I leave that to you for for exploration.
maybe we can now um, take some questions, I guess. The question will be on the chat or I think we can now take some questions. There are many interesting things out there, but I leave that to you for your own exploration. I am done with the with the real deal and how one can actually do a detailed literature analysis, comparisons, and so on and so forth um, in 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 graphs. Okay, uh, Sanchari uh, Basak uh, is like, is it a paid software? Yeah, we have a 30 day free trial where you can explore everything. So, uh, and then after that, we talk to you a little bit. Uh, see, the thing, the, the reason why we, we have to charge uh, you is because it, it, it costs us a lot to run the servers uh, and to make sure that your privacy and your security is maintained because it's intellectual property and also to make sure that uh, uh, we are uh, we can actually keep going and keep giving you much better uh, you know features much much more useful uh, aspects of racks right so that's why we charge you a little bit but we make sure that you actually the the the, the price that we charge for you individually we make sure that it it is less than the the, the the money that you would spend on your cup of tea or coffee in a month <laughs> so the, that's the idea you know and we are coming up with a referral referral program also where you can actually uh, bring it down by referring to other people you can bring down the price and there's a there's a christmas uh, upcoming christmas uh, uh, sale uh, that is going to come up we're going to announce that soon uh, the software you don't have to collect the software it's not an installable it's just like how you would use facebook uh chanchal uh you just have to type in raxa.io that's the website link and that's how it is and you know we it's not about rax so we have a, we are trying to develop this discord community where we actually talk about a lot of other softwares that will be helpful to you not the Software, but other materials, you know, that that can be helpful to you uh, in your research. You know, different types of research methodology, uh, literature analysis, also anything. You know, the any specific research questions that you have, how to do this or how to do that. If I am not able to answer, I I I will get the answers from some of my colleagues and my my own network and get back to you. So we can actually have a very one on one dialogue and discussions on on that platform so do join our discord community and uh let me see uh any limitations on doing literature analysis uh that's uh uh post of uh post of question uh, uh, uh literature analysis in this software see uh the thing is uh, ultimately we want to make rax the jarvis for the researcher I don't know how many people have uh, have watched Iron Man, the movie Iron Man. But in with Iron Man, there was this uh, amazing AI, uh, virtual AI uh, assistant called Jarvis, right? So ultimately, Iraq should be the Jarvis for for researchers. And if you look at it that way, from that point of view, definitely there's so much more to be done, right? And uh, I wouldn't call it a limitation, but you know, sky is the limit, so to say. And uh, right now, uh, there are multiple things that you cannot do. Uh, uh, but but uh, you know, to 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 uh, to ask, uh, I mean, rather to to answer certain questions which are which are very very common to us. People ask us, you know, whether we can do the same things as what we can do in a reference manager. The answer is right now, no. 
uh, because we are not a reference manager. So we are not primarily focusing on citations and back citations and citation stylizations and inline citations and so on and so forth. That's not really the purpose, right? The purpose is actually to why you are doing literature analysis, how can we help you in dissecting and doing further exploration as quickly as possible, right? So is this software helpful for all subjects? Yes, it is helpful for all subjects. We are agnostic of almost all subjects. We are agnostic of uh, what area you belong to. And our users uh, currently, you know, you see, actually it's very interesting that it's a, the science people are a very small percentage of the total number of users who are actually using RATS right now. So it's very interesting, actually. So, so many, many people come from biomed or management or uh, social sciences and, and, and even humanities, you know, a lot of people use RACs from, from those disciplines. Ancient Indian history, yeah, I mean, it, you know, so can it be helpful for my work? Yes. And do join, uh, do join our Discord uh, community so that we can actually have, understand your specific uh, needs and requirements uh, more in, in a much better way. And we may want to help you. And it's not just about racks, you know, helping you all the time, but we are a community. We are trying to form a community where we will come up with all sorts of other resources to figure out how to help you out, right? That's the entire reason why it is joined. And we want seniors also to come over to the, to the community so that seniors can help the juniors. So, and we can have a very, very, really nice uh, close family or a close club so to say, on, on Discord. That's that's my uh, that that's what I wish that they you know that happens over there. One more interesting thing that I forgot to mention is that people do want to know whether there are other stuffs, right? So you select and this comes up, right? Now, if your library is partnered with RATS, so the entire institution is partnered with RATS, then A, you don't have to pay, definitely. You get the premium, uh, premium version. And B, what happens is that you can actually click on the library resources, as you can see. And then you can immediately, if, if there are stuffs like, like this library, whatever is connected, Connected with the DI city library, my own library. This is a you take uh, papers related to this, but let me check if I can show you with a real uh, with a with a real example of a library example of how it would look like. And let, let me see if that can be done, and I can show you other. That this is a section and you see you check out whether there are books in the library or ebooks in the library which is related to this particular pattern. Now this is and this is what researchers would love you know in the sense we are primarily focused on a particular aspect and they want to quickly figure out whether there is something in the library which is out there or not. So you can click on uh, the library thing. and if there are books as you can see so books have come uh, which are related, sort of related, and you can also click on the ebooks uh, of the libraries, or you can also have pieces or maybe other things. You know, currently uh, this particular university which we are connected uh, with, they only have these three categories. You can have multiple different types of categories, right? And you can also look into what other whether there are other theses that are related to related to this, uh, and you can. Pieces. You can attach them for later references as as usual, and you can click on the thesis, and it takes you to the DICD thesis portal, right? And you can you know look into the thesis, or if it's it was a book, let's say, then you can reserve the book right from right from here. So essentially, what happens is it takes you to to okay. So I just have to draw it. And uh, where no items available right now, so the not available right now, so I can then attach it 
saying that well you know i will get back to uh i will get back to this later on right so so that's how it would work maybe there is a little bit of lag in the internet you can attach it this is maybe you can attach this as well right so that you can come back to the attachments later on and you know then yeah like this go come back to the attachment later on right so so this is another thing and later on you can again uh, figure out whether you want to uh, whether you want to do that right? at the usage of the library will be a lot more meaningful lot more will hike up lot more and because you know the, the universities that we are working uh, with has you know that has happened to them and it's not useful for the researcher because it's almost like the library has now come inside your uh, and, uh, you know uh, inside your research lab so to say almost like as you are doing literature survey the library is all you for me so yeah so that's uh, that's another thing that you can you can do yeah so let me see if there are other questions uh yeah any technical problem or anything don't worry about it and that's one of the reason why you should be joining thank you uh, everyone uh there was another question i think uh let me yes 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 it is not it is not open so open so there's a by the way i want to tell you something that there's a difference between open uh, free software and open source open source would mean that it's not just free but the code is also available the all the codes are available that would be open source and it's not something that we at this moment we want to do a part of our software we want to make it open source down the line but right now we are not really in a position to make sure because you know there are a lot of responsibilities when you do things open source because then people will be contributing on that on on that code base and you have to make sure that the code base is always clean and not bad codes don't come in or bugs don't come in and so on. but we are such a small team right now that it's very very difficult for us to to do our own job but at the same time to manage open source at the same time is is not uh, something that's manageable uh, right now thank you thank you so much i will be sharing uh, the presentation slides with you uh, 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 and uh, uh, maybe with uh, uh, let me let me see if i can just share it right now I think I should be able to share it with you right now on the chat. So let me. I, I'm sharing the link with all of you on the chat for the presentation. Any other question? So just try it out. You have a one month free trial. Just see what how you feel about it, and let us know. So, Dr. Kausik, are you in the floor? Kausik. Okay. I think he is busy with uh, regular routine. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Chaudhary, uh, for your nice presentation. And before going to concluding, yeah, may I request to our city librarian, Dr. Nima Chansaha, please share your views. Uh -huh. Okay. In your opinion, <coughs> from this presentation, please share. Okay. At the very, let me request all the participants to share the video both. 
some background noise is becoming and perhaps i'm not clearly audible to all of you please now uh, at the very beginning before take inside view of my observation i would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude and sincere regards and love affection to the entire team of prax and particularly mr ketul patel and today's presenter dr sourish dasgupta actually we have no words to extend our regards on your creative presentation some some background noise still be coming now see uh, my scholars for you then i will come back to lax people this is not rightly as stated by dr dasgupta during his presentation that lax is having utility in many fold to me basically nowadays in any university institution need to prepare its research laboratory earlier our perception was that laboratory means laboratory on scientific subjects maybe geography and some other subjects in social science thereafter it is media lab thereafter it is you know language lab and now we are talking about research laboratory in the era of this electronic society when our reference collection how to cite a paper how to punctuate how to use the preposition in the english how to use numerals in the research so there are lots of questions which are available in different reference tools in earlier concept but be it in pandemic days or be it in beyond pandemic days we are striving to develop our research laboratory and for that we being the librarian our role is to coordinate the innovator the founder the introducer different of different aspects of research be it in research analysis be it in literature analysis be it in literature review citation referencing bibliographing paraphrasing writing research proposal writing quality thesis in all regards many academician i must say academician by paying their intellectual input they are developing different you can say package one can say platform one can say research tools and out of that there are many things which is now a very handy tool to conduct the research smoothly romeo serpa is one of them then raxter is one of the leading research tools grammarly is another so on behalf of bishop the scholars and academics this library is going to harvest to showcase before to procure anything whether it is needful or not it's our strategy it's our commitment it's our duty to have a platform where my scholars and academics will have some sort of platform to interact with the introducer the vendor the academician of the developers of the platform or the research tools like raxter dr sori dasgupta and others so today the basic aim of organizing this webinar is nothing else and on the basis of this platform the participants some participants i found in the in the uh, uh, participant list that they may not be uh the members of the bishop of the family but i would mention that bishop of the library 
is thinking to procure to subscribe this register to accelerate the research activities provided this 50 around scholars and teachers those who have participated in the course you are please please and please interact with dr dasgupta ask him different questions make it clear your doubt and confusion then you just help me whether this will have any utility whether this will be useful then only i on behalf of vishu bharati would like to start the interaction with rex people regarding procurement because you see this is not free software rightly stated by dr sorish das gupta during his presentation that yes you can say a little bit it's open and if i ask them or request them they will give us 14 days earlier during pandemic days around 3 months i mean 90 days it was full free and we have circulated in our website and whatsapp group and other things this raster is now free you can use it and right today if i request them definitely they will be kind enough to give another 14 days but afterwards it will be deactivated if we send any queries if we send any you know uh, questions they will be kind enough to answer but mind it they are developing these things and they are the service holder and they have their company and they have their salary and they have the technological requirements platform cost and other things so to do and to maintain that things for uninterrupted and hassle free service we on behalf of the institute need to purchase need to subscribe so if to the chat box that's why in the morning i wrote that the participants particularly those who are the heavy scholar vishwath scholars and academics please please and please interact with dr dasgupta he is even in the floor now and please post your opinion whether it will be useful for subscription at vishwabharati then on the basis of your correspondence or this chat opinion i will go forward otherwise it will be a kind of avoidable expenditure wastage of money so i will not proceed on behalf of this worthy academy yeah. so that is the thing and to me my little bit of research experience during the pandemic days i have used it and have long discussion with ketul and one madam and from them several times we had discussion to organize our webinar and today is the day when we have done it and when we are thinking it at least for next one year whether we are going to procure these things for vishwabharati faculty members and scholars so now it's your duty to interact with rex people to suggest me to pass to put forward your comments through chat box so that on the basis of which i will go forward for its subscription now once again on behalf of vishwadi library network let me request my participants showcase to ask any question either to me or to dr dasgupta he will be kind enough and i will be pleased enough to listen to take up your question and to get answer from him because they are not available every day and today for us he is on the floor and they are very busy and every now and then they are research for research we are doing only research and they are doing research on research research for research research <laughs> by research. yeah and that is why they are day and night intellectual efforts we being the lively people try to fit something to you for your scholarly activities so with these few words before to conclude my sentence let me say socially connected mentally and physically we are closer to our neighbor during this pandemic days and stay safe and secure including rax family including devi family including global family so with these few words now just one by one let me ask my participants if you have any question 
you can put on the chat box also you can directly put forward to mr dasgupta even uh, i think as far as his title is concerned dasgupta he might have little understanding on bengali or you can say in bengali i can uh, convert it in english for better understanding of uh, dr dasgupta so now it's open forum for discussion already during his presentation he has 15 minute discussion with you all taking questions from the chat box and answer that things and he has tried his level best to address your questions to satisfy your requirements and your curiosity now it's again 10 minutes i can give you and i can request of dasgupta please be on the floor yeah. and uh, try to have a chance to interact with my scholars and faculty members please yeah, sure, sure. is my video not is uh, not visible am i not visible yeah it is not uh, now it is uh, no no your net is very poor so i think now, yeah, now it is trying yeah, to yeah uh, my my net is yeah, yeah my net is a little bit off <laughs> maybe yeah. most likely there is no more but i can uh, I can I can I am checking the chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Vitanda, Vitan Mondol, do you have any question? Okay, the YouTube the YouTube channel is uh, okay. Let me see. I think it will already, but I am going to repost it one more time. My library board uh, is Kunthi Gosal, Pak Mausen. Do you have any question? So that's the YouTube channel, Sanchari. You can go there, Sanchari, and uh, there are a lot of very uh, videos. I always try to put as much as uh, educative videos as possible over there. And we, I will be coming up right now. We are doing this series on how to write papers. You know, this whole series, um, different types of papers, and how one. One, what should come, you know, consider while writing paper, and so on and so forth. If there is a uh, question on. Uh, uh on 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 literature survey or specifically on racks and uh, you know or you or even general questions you know how to do literature survey and so on just let me know postav chakraborty do you have any question though you are not from our bisvarodi still if you have any question Postav is very regular partner of my Vishwarathi program. Uh, every day I used to found him. Okay, uh, I see. Program, yeah. So Postav from Calcutta University, and he is very uh, young, dynamic fellow in library and information science. Always doing something and always try to create something. So Postav, if you have any Hello, doubt, So, is there uh, yeah. is everybody operating from Shantiniketan, uh, sir, or is it like everybody is at home? Uh, most of the colleagues are from Shantiniketan, and basically our university, uh, M Phil, PhD scholars, and faculty members. Mm -hmm. uh, but by geographic location, they may not be right now from Shantiniketan. Due to this pandemic situation, okay, okay. My, my, my scholars they may be joined from their residence and somewhere else other than Santiniketan. But my colleagues, uh, faculty members, they are mostly from my mm -hmm. campus. Okay, so this is. 
So I don't think okay. any more uh, questions or curiosities is so there. Just, just I have a question, Dr. Das Gupta. Yeah, please. So as as you know, we are yeah uh, yeah share share. So actually, every year during the time of the procurement, we have purchased so many such kind of uh, reference tools. So like search, uh, different. Yeah. I am not mentioning the name. So it is our challenge how to promote yeah. this such kind of product to our client. Because uh, if uh, this, if we are going to be purchase this new product, so we have to follow the usage statistics throughout the year. So then, how can we promote this product to our client? Okay, so yes, yes, yes. So the first thing is uh, for sure that first of all, uh, uh, is uh, is not. Uh, it's not really a reference uh, manager or a reference uh, software, uh, as you could clearly see. It's primarily a, it's a whole new genre, it's a whole new category, first of all. And there it doesn't, according to my own knowledge, there doesn't exist anything like Racks as of now. There could be different that there would be in the future, but there doesn't exist anything as of now. The biggest challenge of any researcher is, you know, where the biggest time that goes, as you would know, because you are also a researcher, uh, is in the literature analysis part and the comparisons of literature and doing comparative analysis and so on. That's where the biggest time consuming and where the memory also comes into the picture and so on. And that is where I think Rax is very unique and very different. The way to promote it is, it's more like, uh, but but the, also the another point that I want to make is that uh, to adopt something which is very new. So the good thing is there is a good thing about new things and a bad thing about new things too. The bad thing about new things is that because it is very new, it is very a, a whole new category. Uh, sometimes it takes a while for people to uh, to actually get to the regular usage. So usually what you would expect kind of a regular usage within a month, it doesn't really happen usually for racks. Usually what we see is that uh, and especially, you know, even for there have been a re now regular users of Vishwabharati, there are specific regular users of Vishwabharati who are using it at an individual level. But they, the very first time they got to know about us was way back, like some in some other webinar. <laughs> and that was like sometime in uh, April or in May, I think, in May, June or something like that. And mm -hmm. now they are coming uh, very regularly. So that's another problem that we see. Uh, that you know they get they take some time to actually uh, you know do that regular usage. The other thing that I want to mention over here, and this is true for everybody, all kind of software, is that sometimes you have exams, sometimes you have vacation. So in between, if there are those kind of periods, then anyways people are not going to use anything at that time <laughs> because they are more interested in other things. You know they have other immediate uh, things to do, right? So, so we have to take all these things into consideration when we try to understand whether we want to do a partnership or not. Sure. And uh, but at the end of the day, what I always suggest is that have a fifteen-day period, get feedback from all the uh, professors and all the researchers because anyways we have a thirty day free trial so get within after fifty days get a you know we can give you a sort of survey questionnaire or you can actually get a survey questionnaire and you can clearly get to know that at least people should see the value if not use it very regularly but at least they know yes this is something that I would definitely need right and that makes it even clearer for decision making I think Did I did I answer your question or you know yes yes, it, yes. Uh, oh, okay my, my, my last this is not the question how many institutions have already purchased this uh, Rackstar? So we uh, to be very honest with you we were doing some experimental because we were not also sure whether we would to go the institutional way or not so we were doing very institutional very experimental institutional sales. We didn't okay. go out full front and try to do anything. So we had like we right now have two universities uh, who are who have uh, who are continually using us for the last two years. And uh, last year we had 
two universe two more universities who are struggling a little bit on the finances right now because they're private you know what the situation has become so they are struggling a little bit on the front so they are saying that it's kind of pending uh you know their their subscription is pending so they are still you know okay. not really okay. taking the money from the as of okay. so okay. that's the situation okay so uh, uh dr dasgupta and uh, mr patel i think you both are in floor so i have three request to proceed towards in future number one please try to give us first 14 days and there are normal 14 days so one month trial access and uh, my technical uh, colleagues in non scientist uh, sri ramprasad mojumdar will come into being to discuss you please give our uh, guideline how to be trial access will be appended in the ibi home page or in my website so that my scholars and academics will be able to access the things and we will collect opinion as dr dasgupta rightly pronounced number one number two i do request dr dasgupta to share your uh, ppt presentation with us which will be again yeah. in our library home page so that our uh, scholars and academics will get some sort of primary guide to proceed let us share through let us share the link okay okay then it's over and another one is that uh may i request dr dasgupta and his team to uh -huh. give me to give me around two pages or three pages write up about rackstars is working phase features objectives like that because we have our e newsletter every month which is need to be published uh, early of january 2nd or 3rd every every month so this month since we are uh -huh. going uh, okay okay Is there yeah. a particular format in which? You... No, you can give it to doc format so that we will uh, place it in our own format. Okay, then uh, we will not much time for the having typing okay. and it, okay. and it will be error free. Just we need to have copy and paste and cut mm -hmm. it with text uh, mm -hmm. submission by Rex team. Okay, so in this three way initially we will go forward okay. and there okay. are. I request Mr. Patel to send the the the. commercial proposal what will be its subscription price and how it will work so this for my request and based on our fund availability uh, we are very keen to to uh, subscribe these things but see these two three things we are going to incorporate yeah. in our library as a new thing so we don't have any dedicated fund and budget for that and as you know this kind of rural belt university or Uh, having no uh, you know medical science or engineering faculty we don't have any much grant on that so within the limited budget capacity yeah, surely. Only, yeah surely. only within our visionary mind to have or to set up a research laboratory in vishwavarati to accelerate to feed our research scholars and academics for handy research activities only these two things i am going to take up in our consideration sure. then we will go forward and i think mr ketul will help me a lot in this regard so that we will make a bonding relation for another one year and there after of course if positive it will take it come and it will come i uh, <laughs> so with oh, this, with this thing yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sure dr sah like i'll share the information that you have asked and we we'll work on my with my team to help all the research scholars with uh the usage of rex how to use it and what are the things that they can do yeah mm. i i just want to add a little bit like our institutional sales happens via i don't know whether you know them a balani infotech so they are our exclusive uh uh, uh institutional yeah yeah so it goes via them yeah oh so balani is not new thing as a brand or as our uh, vendor so they are also providing some uh, ebooks last year uh, on behalf of bloomsbury so no issue uh, we can go through that so uh, just okay. try to okay. uh, send one proposal commercial proposal uh, and uh, it just have our authorization to them so this authorization and basic yeah. proposal uh, commercial proposal and then write up on dexter and you have already shared the ppt So these three four things so primarily uh, we will require, and then let's see and hope for best. I don't know, and right now I am having yeah. a, a and let the, let the people let the, yeah let the people use it. We will surely work out. If people love it, we will work it out. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So thank you very much on behalf of Bishwarthi Live Network, and you all are yeah, welcome.
after pandemic yes it's called it's called something and stay yeah. you might have please announce yeah. the monday 21st program grammarly so the, the uh, one more announcement for my scholars and participants those who are in the floor on the monday at on monday 21st, 21st of december at 11 am we are having one more presentation webinar that is on grammarly and yes grammarly is another useful useful and very very useful tools for stir up any yeah. research proposal for writing any research paper for conducting dissertation for conducting any research project or thesis project whatever it is so english and its grammarly is having a very very uh, necessary uh, required item right. so i request all my participants faculty members and scholars particularly see actually i am uh, not happy with the number of 50 participants since we are having more than 2000 scholars at bisuharthi only 50 so as far as quantity is concerned it is very disappointing number to me but as far as quality i don't believe on quantity so that's the thing where we try to nurture our library services please share the link to your fellow friends of different departments and young faculty members those who are joining bisuharthi very recently they are also requested to come up to join and give their valuable opinion to proceed forward and with this i would like to help our golden hands of teacher activity at bisuharthi and carry out the legacy of guru dabinath chagar uh, sure, right. i think on monday we will have some more scholars in the floor and uh, on that very day dr koushik goes will take care about the coordination of the program and my colleague dr sujit kujur will be absent so dr koushik goes will soldiering the everything coordination technical problem and other things everything will be listed upon his neck so i think we will be meet again on 21st 11 am on the agenda grammarly so thank you very much finally and welcome you. for you in the floor and thank you lakhs people mr ketul and dr dasupto i am repeatedly says our thanks for your extraordinary efforts to be with the bisuharthi university of rural thank wealth you. in india please extend your golden hands to escalate surely our... surely this Yeah, yeah. Shreya Bharati has been very close to me right from my childhood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, you. thank you, thank you so you. much. Yeah, and stay very safe, all of you. And <coughs> yeah, yeah. Stay so very safe, me. all of you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, Shreya, please exit. Yeah. Bye.